If your grandparents have a huge number of slides and film in their attic like mine, digitizing their favorite memories is basically a full-time job. So I've got a low-effort scanner. You don't need any knowledge of film and scanning to use this. All you need is an SD card or even just your computer as a storage device. In the menu, you can choose what type of film you want to scan. I'm starting with the slides, so I will select that. It comes with three different holders. The one with bigger gaps is for the slides. Ideally handle the film with cotton gloves to avoid oils and fingerprints and use an air blower to remove any dust. It can be very visible on the scans and you will need to spend more time to remove them in an editing program later. Make sure that the branding is facing down and you might have to turn the slides upside down as well. If you get it wrong, there's an easy way to adjust it before scanning which I will show you later. Place them directly into the designated spaces and make sure they don't move around or you will get a cropped image because it will slide down when we lift the holder. I like to shake it slightly to make sure they're all secured in there. Slide the holder into the side slot and you will see the image appear on the little screen. You now have the option to do some edits before scanning. You can adjust the brightness and add more of red, green or blue. This worked quite well with the positive slides but this is completely optional. With the negatives, I prefer to adjust the colors after scanning because they are trickier. Press the scan button to leave the editing menu and press scan again, then enter to save the scanned image. And that's it for the process. Very simple and very quick. Here are some examples. We have the image straight out of the scanner, then some in-scanner edits, and finally, how I wanted the edit to turn out. For the last edits, I used Photoshop. Next are some negatives. The process is basically the same, you just have to change the film type to negative film and use the other holder. I have to be even more careful when handling these and only touch the edges with bare hands. Turn these upside down as well, but make sure the glossy side is facing you. There are some small notches on the holder which should slot into the holes in the film strip and the dividers should line up with the gaps in between the images. Slide it in again and repeat the same process as you did for the slides. I found editing these negative scans in an editing program easier than the in-scanner option, so that's why you're not seeing any of those here. They are likely going to scan with a green color cast, so you might have to adjust to that. Lastly, let's do some black and white negatives. These came out great and I really just needed to adjust the contrast a little. If you find an image upside down, you can just press the right arrow button and it will flip around to be scanned correctly. You can choose your image size between 8 and 16 megapixels. If you only want to scan in some memories and save some space, I recommend the 8 megapixels. This USB option you see here is for connecting the scanner to your laptop as a storage device. 